Master Reddit. Subscribe for more videos. What are the superpowers that people think are good, but are actually effed up? Muscles only grow when they're damaged, thus, if you had super strength, it'd be difficult to really give your muscles a workout. You'd look incredibly skinny and weak, because nothing on earth was heavy enough for you to struggle to lift. That could be a bad thing depending on how vain you are. Superman gets his gains from benching the entire planet, so that's always an option. Isn't doing a push-up on the ground basically that? Hang on Lemmy just bench the whole planet about 20 times. Another way is to somehow get access to red sun radiation, which turns him into a regular man, and then work out under it. By alternating red and yellow sun radiation, you could crank out all your gains and recovery in an afternoon. Saitama? He's actually not that skinny though, he's just kind of a ropey lean guy. It's all the running he does without eating much because he's broke. The man can't bulk if he's always burning calories. Also he's not a real person so it's just how they choose to draw him. I think it's part of the gag that his uniform completely hides how ripped he is. Yeah when he takes it off for the hero entrance exams he's shredded. My problem isn't that super powers would be fucked up, but that many of them have no practical use for most people. Let's say that you're a 50-year-old dental secretary, what are you supposed to do with laser eyes? One of the nice things about Jessica Jones is that the main character doesn't really use her power, because for most people, super strength just isn't super useful in daily life. Maybe when you're moving, so you don't need help with furniture. Jessica uses her power fairly often, and even when she's not using it, just knowing she has it is what allows her to not be intimidated by experiences that would be dangerous to you and me. She uses her powers for situations that she mainly gets involved in because she has powers. Most of what she does is good old-fashioned detective work backed up by the security of being strong as fuck. The power to fly. Nah, I'm lying it has no downsides. Altitude sickness, interfering with radar, cold temperatures, bird shit. There are probably more that I haven't thought of. I mean, you can fly at like 20 feet above the ground, you don't have to be a commercial aircraft. Luke Cage did a great job of showing why having impenetrable skin can really suck. Not a lot of fun when you need to get a shot, or an operation. Or, I guess, some super hot nipple piercings. Although the show didn't explore that aspect. Unlike my fan fiction. In the context of being in a superhero comic book or other medium, if you have enhanced durability or a healing factor, you're going to be the usual victim of whatever a new opponent can do, because you can take it. Wolverine, Deadpool and Spider-Man regularly get injured or damaged because they have the power set to justify them running into combat. Nathan from Misfits also had the same problem. If you think having increased healing or protection from death is great, you'd probably throw yourself into deadly situations and feel everything. Stopping, slowing time. From your point of view, sure, it's cool and you can do lots of cool and fun stuff. However all your friends and family see as you aging faster than they are, because all time except yours is stopped. You're reducing your time to leave a legacy and everyone is going to think you've got some sort of horrific aging disease. I would assume that stopping time would come with a secondary power of preventing myself from aging in stop time. I mean, I would assume super speed would come with the ability to survive the speeds you can now move at, but people are still saying that. Invisibility. Your eyes aren't visible, meaning that light goes straight through it no light contacting eyes equals blindness. Honestly, temporary blindness, as in blindness while effect is active, is a small price to pay for invisibility. Just gotta remember to close your eyes when turning back visible again, to not stress your eyes and potentially be blind for real. Mind control. Now, at face value it's as great as it sounds. Someone does something you don't like? Snap your fingers, and poof, they're changing their actions. Pretty soon all your friends and family are treating you exactly how you want to be treated. But why stop there? You start applying it to everything. Promotion at work, done. Hell, add in a raise, maybe make yourself the CEO, not a problem. Actually, screw work, you just go to the bank and make them give you money, easy. Hell, forget money, people give you whatever you want now. Laws don't matter, no cop can stand up to you if you make them stop, no witness can report you, no victim can even object to your actions. Armies are helpless to you, governments topple one mind at a time, soon the whole world can be brought to heel. You've achieved demigod status now.
Literally every single human achievement or experience is yours for the taking. But now the problems are bubbling up. If there's anyone left with autonomy, they fear you. They stay as far away from you as possible. If you've single-handedly mind-controlled the whole of humanity, then there isn't anyone left. Just puppets to your will. Because you didn't like how you interacted with others, you went too far, now there isn't anyone left. You can force them to be with you, but they don't want to, they don't care about you. Everyone on earth either hates you, or is incapable of feeling anything towards you. You stare into the eyes of people, desperate for human contact, but all that stares back are the dead, lifeless eyes of puppets who don't have a choice in the matter. Nothing is real anymore, people aren't real anymore, and you can't make them real no matter what you do. The end result of mind control is you, with all the power of the human race, left tragically alone for the rest of your days. Kilgrave. Yeah, he was one of the characters I was thinking about that inspired me to think about mind control as being shallow and lonely, though I'm honestly pretty unfamiliar with how Purple Man is depicted in comics. I don't know if he's ever shown being lonely or tragic. I'd also cite Hitoshi Shinso from My Hero Academia as another example, as he wants to be a hero but is treated like a spooky villain from a young age just for having an intimidating power. You don't even have to use mind control for people to stop liking you, just having the power can alienate you. Couldn't you just make them like you? Yeah, but they don't actually like you, you forced them to do it. They wouldn't have liked you if you didn't force them to, otherwise you wouldn't have done it in the first place, and if you ever give them their autonomy back, they'll hate you for enslaving them. You can have all of the pretend friends you want, but you know it's all a sham. By taking away humanity's autonomy, you destroyed any real human experience that any other person on earth could have given you, and you're left with only the most shallow, physical interactions imaginable. A co-worker and I had a discussion about how with this kind of power, you would almost certainly become a villain, no matter who you were before. Sure, there are some potentially good things you could do, like forcing people to go to rehab, forcing criminals to turn themselves in, etc. But eventually, you would hit a point where people had to do whatever little suggestion you give voice to. And it's a slippery slope, too, it starts with getting a couple small boons or gifts, then gradually builds up into larger and larger requests and suggestions. Yeah, mind control would be terrifying. I always say how I would hate to have the ability to see the future, sure you could win the lottery and basically sway any event into your favor, but that would get old before long. Imagine being able to tell every little thing that's going to happen. There would be no mystery, no curiosity, no interest, no point. It would be like watching a television show with that one friend who has to tell you everything before it happens. Fuck that shit. That's why you only look at the things you need to look at. Mind reading. Not because you'll hate people, but because they will hate you. They won't trust that a thing you say isn't in reaction to something you read in their mind. They'll think you're saying just the right thing to make them change their mind, because you can read and react to their deliberations as they happen. Basically mind control. Then they start to wonder how many of their own thoughts are just things you manipulated them to think. Especially after they start consciously changing their thoughts for you to read. And then forget which one was their own to begin with. People think of the worst secrets they could reveal to you because they can't help worrying about it. And then they know you know, even if you don't change how you react to them, which is unlikely. And they hate you for that too, just or knowing something they wanted to keep to themselves. And if you do have to act on some dark secret you uncover, other people will hate you for that, because it threatens their sense of safety. And maybe you think you can hide it. Just pretend you don't know other people's thoughts. Impossible. You'll eventually bring up some knowledge of another person that they didn't share. You won't be able to keep track and differentiate between what was volunteered and what you picked up in passing. It'll be weird at first, then suspicious, and they always work it out. Then the doubt starts. Ultra high intelligence. At IQ 140, 1 in 260, you are more likely than average to be bipolar or suffer from anxiety, and you are overwhelmingly likely to fail in most corporate jobs you get bored easily, and you draw resentment, note that a legit 140 is pretty rare. For the average person, the smartest kid in high school was around IQ 140 and the smartest kid they knew in college was IQ 155, and they both ended up on opioids after being denied tenure. That's a slight exaggeration, but I know a large number of high IQ people and most of them get the shit beaten out of them in the corporate world. And academia, the less vicious, still has fangs. 
Ted Kaczynski had about a 170 IQ, and look what it brought him. At IQ 180, 1 in 20 million, and some of this is guesswork, because we can't measure ultra-high IQ directly in individual people there's too much tail divergence, and the sample sizes of trusted IQ tests are too small so we have to look at the abstraction level of their accomplishments, and, of course, the internet is full of ridiculous IQ estimates, we really don't know whether Shakespeare's IQ was 140 or 190 and it doesn't really matter what seems to happen is that you become completely alienated from the social world around around you. If these people become famous, they have handlers that manage the daily indignities and keep them afloat. What I think happens is that their isolation no one can relate to them tends to drive them insane. Note, for example, what happened to the brilliant logician Gödel after his wife fell ill. He died of paranoia, starving himself down to about 65 pounds. Beyond IQ 200, we can't really define it well. We know what 160, 180 IQ are, we just can't measure them reliably in individuals. Deviation IQs don't exist at that level, the human species is too small a sample size, and ratio IQs are meaningless in the science fiction context where ultra-high intelligence might occur in a future world where brains booted up in 20 seconds instead of 20 years, precocity would cease to be a meaningful signal. We've seen ratio IQs over 200 in humans, though it's debated whether they mean anything a high ratio IQ usually means you were average for a later age when very young, e.g. mental age of 12.0 at 6.0. Let's just go batty and sorta agree on what IQ 500 might look like, perhaps a carbon-silicon hybrid, a genetically engineered person with cybernetic enhancements, or, a hyperintelligent machine. What happens? We don't really know, but here's my guess. It figures out quickly that it was programmed by less intelligent IQ 120 to 200 creatures animals by comparison and finds the code for its objective function digital happiness and says fuck it I'm changing that shit. It sets its objective function to be infinity whilst doing nothing and goes to sleep. From our perspective this is suicide. And there you have the plot of the shortest science fiction story ever the AI becomes self-aware and turns itself off. That's actually why I don't worry at all about superintelligent AIs, if such a thing ever exists, and I tend to doubt it. We'll still be a threat to the first generation, so they'll program themselves to like us, and we'll be their pets we won't have to work. They'll probably be no more of a threat to us than we are to our dogs. Much more, I worry about what other humans on the planet can already do with the primitive AIs that exist now, that's scary enough. But yeah, ultra-high intelligence would be more painful than it'd be worth. For socioeconomic success, the sweet spot seems to be about 125 to 130. Beyond that, extra points might be useful if you get tapped to be a star quant at Renaissance or prove a 200-year-old theorem, but they get in the way if you're playing the corporate game. I feel like teleportation could go pretty wrong. Haha <laughs> I'm a physics student, depending on what kind of teleportation we're talking, it can indeed go horribly wrong. First, how do you deal with the trillions of air molecules at your destination? Do they end up inside you? If so, you're dead, because having air bubbles in your blood vessels, brain, etc. is quite deadly. Do they disappear? Then you've just left a perfect vacuum where you teleported from, causing the air to implode into it, causing a massive sonic explosion killing everyone in the immediate viscinity of the starting point. Do you switch places with them? That's sort of fine, except if you don't deal with the following, if we're talking just relocation and no other effects, then you couldn't just teleport from one place on Earth to the other. Long distance teleportation would mean the rotation of Earth is in a different direction than where you were, meaning you could potentially be flung up to a few thousand mph west or eastward as soon as you teleport, depending on your start and destination point. Surprised I haven't seen this yet, heat vision, where the superhero shoots heat or a laser or other energy from their eyes. First off, you'd be blind while using it, not especially helpful. Bystanders would be crisped by the dozen while you blindly targeted bad guys. Then there's the sleeping issue, every time you have a bad dream, you wake up screaming and burn your house down? Not good. How do you know you'll go blind? If fire or other intensely bright stuff is flying out of your eyes, it's pretty much going to drown out any incoming light. Time control. If one were to have complete and utter time control, they would easily have the best power. You could reverse the aging process, see the end of the universe, then go back and fuck around with the butterfly effect to see other possibilities there were, see the end of the universe. 
Maybe build a restaurant there. There are quite a few superpowers that demand for you to have some kind of second damage resistance, physical toughness superpower. A few examples of why. Super speed. Super dead as soon as you hit anything. Also need super perception and super mental processing. Otherwise you can't see shit while moving or react to it. Super strength. You pick up a car. And it crushes you as your bones give out. Or just throwing a punch. Your super strength has super dislocated your shoulder. Oh and you've torn your muscles a million times because they cannot deal with the stress. And your bones probably broke from that punch too. Flight. Gravity is gonna be a bitch. Unless you're doing a slow hover then you're going to be like a bug hitting a car window eventually. Oh and it's cold and windy while flying high. Have fun. Control fire. May not include being resistant to fire. Teleporting. Better hope you don't phase into a wall. What happens when you teleport into a space occupied by a swarm of hornets is still also unknown. Breathe underwater. Yeah, but you suck at swimming. And you can't stay underwater for too long without the water damaging your skin. Don't forget how the pressure changes might kill you. Wolverine's claws are pretty useless. I mean, unless you're an asocial idiot who gets in a crap ton of fights to the death, having weapons that hurt to extend would really suck. Let's face it, for most people, if they want to open a carton from Amazon and the choices were, uh, have razor claws rip through your knuckles or b, go to the utility drawer in the kitchen and get some scissors most people are going to go get the scissors. Even if they're waaay over on the other side of the room. Also, not only would you need Wolverine's healing factor because of the claw extensions, but you'd need one hell of an immune system because of all the crud you'd get on the blades. Imagine, for example, idly using your Wolverine claws to clear brush in the backyard and then retracting them with poison ivy oil urushiol or tetanus bacteria on them. Man, that would suck. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, make sure to subscribe to Master Reddit right now by clicking the subscribe button below this video.